Hello and welcome to Opera Storytellers Summer 2020 Jukebox Musicals. In this video, I'm going to go with you through the Jukebox Musical Guidelines so that you can know exactly from start to finish how to complete this project. So our objectives for this course are to use the hero's journey, which is something we use in Opera Camp every year, to create our own original operas. This summer, we're going to use it to create a jukebox musical. So let's look at the guidelines together. So first, we have this um, objective. And the objective is to use the hero's journey as a tool to help them understand and stories and that the idea that the hero's journey is a reflection of human behavior. Here are the steps of the hero's journey that we're going to talk about as we begin to create our story together. We have the world of the known, the call to adventure, the world of the unknown, friends, enemies, obstacles, the abyss, the transformation, and the return. We're going to take this as our story element and we're going to create a story and then from there we're going to add music from popular music to create a jukebox musical. So what is a jukebox musical? Well, a jukebox musical is a musical where the songs are made up of songs from popular music surrounding a theme. Sometimes they are all sung by one band and sometimes they are sung by a variety of artists. So some examples of a jukebox musical are uh, like Mamma Mia, all contain songs by the group ABBA. American Idiot contains all songs by Green Day. And Across the Universe contains all songs by the Beatles. Same thing with Beautiful, the Carol King musical. That is a biographical musical about her life, but all of the songs in that are by Carol King or by people that Carol King worked closely with when she was writing those music, those, the music. So sometimes in a jukebox musical, people use music from multiple sources. So some examples for that would be the musical, which is on Broadway now, and it's a movie called Moulin Rouge. And so that's made up of a bunch of love songs from artists throughout the ages. And there are songs in there that are really old and songs in there that are really current. The Blues Brothers is another example of a jukebox musical, but in this case, all of the songs are popular rhythm and blues songs. And then one that I know most of you have seen, which is Trolls, and that is made up of all popular songs that were um, hits at the time that the movie came out. So when we're creating a jukebox musical, you can go at it from one of two ways. You can either think about the music that you really want to incorporate into a song, um, for the show and then create a plot to go around that or you can come up with a story all on your own and then put in songs. You can kind of do a mixture of both of this as well. But let's talk about the elements of a jukebox musical. So first we have the plot. The plot is the story that's going to tell us what happens to the characters. Then we take that story and we create a script. So a script in a musical are lines that the actors say in the story. So these are not things that we're telling the audience what happened, it's where the characters are saying lines showing the audience what is happening. And then of course in musicals and opera we have the songs. So First, we have a solo, and a solo is a song sung by one character that expresses their emotion. Then we have duets, and that is a song sung by two or more characters, or it's two characters for a duet, and then ensembles are a group of three or more characters. And then, of course, we have our chorus, which is a song sung by the crowd. Okay, so the first step when we're creating our musical is to find a theme. That is the essential component of the musical or the opera. So the first step before any writing any story is to decide what your theme is going to be. And you can choose whatever theme that you want. And I'm sure that you've discussed themes in books that you've read at school with your teachers, and you can use those. But let's talk about some examples. So. One of the most important themes used in movies is the theme Love Conquers All. So a great example of that is in Frozen. At the end of the movie, spoilers, uh, one of the sisters, Anna, is frozen and it is the love of her sister that saves her from her heart freezing. So that's a Love conquer Conquers All plot. Then we have Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty is one where she's put into this deep sleep and the only thing that can wake her from it is true love's kiss. 
Okay, so that's a really important theme in shows. Another theme would be a coming of age story. So an example for that would be um, the, the uh, show Harry Potter, the series Harry Potter. We watch him grow up and we watch him change who he is as a person and grow and become stronger as a character as he's growing up. Another example of a theme would be working together to create the best outcome or teamwork. So a great story that you've seen a lot is probably Toy Story. And in Toy Story, all of the characters have to work together to achieve a common goal. And um, in every single Toy Story movie, people who might be at odds with one another have to work together. And so um, in the first one, Woody and Buzz have to work together to get back to the house, to Andy's house, before they move and get lost forever, so they won't be lost twice. Another great working together story is The Avengers, if you've seen that. So, you know, we have Captain America and Iron Man, and they don't necessarily get along in the beginning, but they learn throughout the movie that they have to work really hard together in order to defeat Loki. Another really important plot is the follow your dreams plot or theme. And that theme is about overcoming adversity when people want to take away your dreams. And so great examples of that are Coco. In Coco, he has a dream to be a musician, but his family doesn't like musicians. So he goes on this big journey to find his dream and and figure that out. And he learns other lessons along the way, but has a very big plot to follow your dreams. And the same thing with Cinderella. Cinderella is a follow your dream story. So in Cinderella, she has had her home taken away from her by her evil stepmother, and she has to uh, become a servant to them, but she has a dream that she'll one day be free of it. And she holds on to that dream, and everything that she does is serving that dream. So you can choose any of the themes we've already discussed, or you can come up with your own theme. And so right now would be a great time to pause the video and start thinking of a theme. So my suggestion is for you to write down a bunch and then pick the one you like the best and then go from there. Okay, so I hope you paused and you found your theme. And so whatever theme you chose, your uh, story needs to have a hero. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to come up with the hero. So your hero needs to have a name and your hero needs to have an age. And this can be anything you want. Sometimes I like to wait to name my hero until the story is more complete because then you can give them a name that means something. For example, last year at Opera Camp, we were writing a story about a caterpillar that was a corpse, since so we called it a corpse of pillar. And then we ended up naming the family, the monarch family, and they were named after butterflies because caterpillars turn into butterflies, and they were also a royal family. So if we would have just named the main character Jeff and the name didn't have meaning, then it wouldn't have been as exciting. So a great example for this is also Cinderella. Cinderella is um, made up of two parts of who she is. So we have Ella, which is her name, her princess name, but the Cinderella refers to the fact that she is always cleaning out fireplaces and she's covered in soot. So that name has a deep meaning. So sometimes we want to wait till the end, but you don't have to, and you can also use a placeholder name. So if you want to name your hero Jeff, Name your hero Jeff. That's all that matters. Your hero needs to have an age. And I recommend that your hero be similar in age to you because then you're going to relate to that hero better. Okay? And then the most important thing is that the hero has to have a problem that needs to be solved. Now, the problem can't be something small like his mom is making meatloaf for dinner and he doesn't like meatloaf. The problem needs to be something really big that's going to set him off on the journey. So it has to be a huge problem that he can't solve in his home. It has to be something bigger. So let's talk about some heroes that we know had big problems. So Rapunzel in the movie Tangled is a great example of a hero with a problem. What is her problem? She's trapped in a tower. 
So she wants to be free. And the problem that she wants to solve is she wants to go see the lights and her mom won't let her go see the lights. So that's a problem that needs to be solved. Um, another great example of a problem that needs to be solved is that Elsa in Frozen, she is afraid of her power. So she's in the castle and she's afraid she's going to hurt somebody and she's afraid she's going to freeze her kingdom. And so she ends up leaving and going to uh, out into the snow so that she can be away from that. Um, and so that's her problem that she needs to solve is she wants to be free from isolation. Okay. And then um, we need a world of the known and the world of the unknown. So the world of the known needs to be the hero's home where they initially live. And then the world of the unknown needs to be a completely different place. And the more exciting and magical the world of the unknown is, the better. So let's look at our examples again, right? We have the world of the known in Rapunzel is just her tower. So she's at home, she's reading a book or maybe two or three, and she can't uh, get out of this tower. And then the world of the unknown is outside of the tower in the kingdom where she meets a bunch of different people. So the world of the unknown has to be a big, vast place that can incorporate lots of other characters. Okay. So these are your main elements of the hero. So I want to invite you to pause the video here and then go ahead and start coming up with some ideas. And I suggest you come up with three or four ideas of a hero with the problem that they need to be solved, the world of the known, and the world of the unknown. And then once you come up with some of these ideas, then go ahead and unpause the video, and then we'll work on the next section. So I hope you found some great ideas. The next section that we're going to work on is drawing our hero. So I want you to visualize what your hero looks like. And your hero can look like you, or your hero can look completely different because you get to use your imagination. So you're gonna use this page in your packet to draw that hero so that you can see just how strong and wonderful they are. Some elements to think about when you're drawing your hero is using lots of colors, using um, a lot of storytelling in the outfit that you choose for them. So even though we can't put on a musical together with costumes, you can dream up any costume that, any costume that you want for your hero. And so your hero needs to um, reflect that. You also need to think about your hero's facial expression. Is your hero somebody who's really tough and strong? Is your hero sweet and kind? There's a lot of different things, but when you think about the differences in heroes, think about Mulan. Um, in Mulan, she's very tough and strong. And then Rapunzel, she's very sweet and happy. They're both strong women, they're both heroes, but they look very different. And so you wanna think about what your hero looks like and draw your hero. Once you're done drawing your hero, come back and we'll move on to the next step. So now that you have your hero drawn and you already know these elements, you know their name, their age, the world of the known, and the world of the unknown, I want you to start thinking about plot. So this is where it becomes really important to follow the hero's journey. So in the hero's journey, we need to make sure that we establish all of these elements, okay? So in the squares of the hero's journey, you're gonna write the main plot point and the characters that they meet. And then in the line with the music note on it, you're going to create, or you're gonna write the name of the song that you're gonna have the character sing to bring the scene to life. So remember, this is a jukebox musical and any music that you wanna use goes. So when you're choosing your songs, you need to think about being as creative as possible. So for example, if your hero has to win a poker match against his enemies in order to move the plot forward, the hero could sing Poker Face by Lady Gaga with his friends, and that could be a group number. Um, let's see, if an obstacle that the friends face is having to get through a crowded ballroom, they could sing Sia's song Chandelier, and they could literally swing through the chandeliers in order to get across this crowded ballroom without getting defeated by their enemies. So you have to just think about what you want to use. Now, in these cases, I knew I wanted to use those songs, so I thought, okay, I want to use Poker Face, so how can I use Poker Face? How about on a poker tournament? And you can think of it that way. Or you can have a completely different plot line and then start searching for a song that would go with it. 
And all you need to do to do that is just do a Google search. So if you were um, going to do like the poker match idea, you could write in songs about poker and see what songs come up, listen to those and discover some new music. It doesn't really matter what songs you choose as long as they fit the plot and you're being creative. Okay, let's look at the hero's journey. So this is the page that you have in your packet where you're going to write the whole story down. And we see, um, if you look on the left hand side, you see a little guy who's got a hiking stick and a backpack on, and that is your hero. So your hero needs a call to adventure, and that call to adventure is going to be the problem that he has to solve. So let's take a popular Disney movie uh, that follows the plot of the hero's journey, as most of them do, and we're going to map out the hero's journey. So for this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose The Little Mermaid. So our hero is Ariel. And Ariel, her call to adventure is that she is an explorer and she wants to explore the world up above where men live, where it's not sea creatures. So her problem is that she doesn't have legs. That's her biggest problem. And she also falls in love with Prince Eric and it makes her want to go and be with Prince Eric. So she chooses to find a way to do this. So the world of the known is the city of Atlantis. Ariel is the hero. She's 16 years old. And her call to adventure is that she doesn't have legs, but she wants to go live among people, not mermaids. So in the beginning, there's lots of songs to do that. But in this case, you're going to choose whatever songs you want to go with those. So we have the threshold. The threshold is the thing that takes her into the world of the unknown. So for Ariel, the world of the unknown is the land where all the people live. And the threshold is the contract she signs with the sea witch. Now, you don't always have to have a bad guy come in that early. Your enemies can come later, but the threshold needs to be something that moves them from one world to the next. So the sea witch gives her legs in exchange for her voice, and that's her threshold to go into the world of the unknown. Um, in other Disney movies, there is a different threshold. The example that I, comes to mind is in Coco. We have that bridge with the simple suchil on it, and he has to cross that bridge. Or that magical, um, when he takes the guitar, that could be the threshold, and he's holding the simple suchil, and then he disappears into the world. So that would be the threshold. Then... Once they come into the world of the unknown, they need to have three big things happen to them before they get to their lowest point. And the three things is they need to make friends, they need to come across enemies, and they need to come across obstacles. So the friends that they need to come across are, uh, like in um, the Little Mermaid, she meets the people who work in the palace, um, and she meets people who um, are helping her to do that. Her enemies are really obvious. It's the sea witch, but there's also smaller enemies. For example, the chef is an enemy of her friend Sebastian because he wants to cook him for dinner, so there's an enemy in that. And then, of course, the sea witch is disguised, so that would be an enemy. And some obstacles that she has to uh, get through are the fact that she doesn't have a voice. She doesn't have a voice at all. So let's talk about Coco. So he meets um, friends along the way. He uh, meets other people who are living there who help him to get into Ernesto de la Cruz's party. He meets um, who he finds out to be is his um, grandfather as well. And uh, the enemies, of course, are Ernesto de la Cruz. And his obstacles are that he has to sing in front of a big crowd of people to win that contest to get to go to Ernesto's party. So there's a lot of different types of obstacles that you can have. Let's think about um, Rapunzel and Tangled. She meets Flynn Rider, that becomes her friend. The enemies are the guys who kidnap her and her mother, and then obstacles 
she faces along the way are when they go to the restaurant and they have to kind of sing their way to freedom or they're almost going to drown and then she uses her hair to help her survive. So those are obstacles along the way. This leads us to our next point, which is the abyss. And this is the darkest point in the show, in the musical or in the opera, where all hope is lost. So in the abyss, we have to come up with something really dark to lead them out. And usually it's going to be something supernatural that brings them out of it. So for example, in the abyss, in Coco, it's when Ernesto puts him into that a big pit and he can't get out and he thinks all hope is lost and then it's his um grandmother who comes to save him so that would be an example of the abyss where it says like great great grandmother who comes to save him and then um in the little mermaid it's the wedding right the wedding that's happening between the sea witch and prince eric that's the abyss for uh, Ariel, where she can't get out of it. She doesn't know a way that she's going to survive. Um, in Cinderella, her abyss is when her stepmother locks her in the attic and she can't get out and the mice come to help her and some friends are helping her. So those are all examples of an abyss. The situation has to be hopeless and it has to get to that point. It has to get to hopelessness and you're going to need a song about hopelessness. So you're going to need to find a really sad song to uh, have the, your hero sing during that part where they're all alone. And then something supernatural comes to save them. So this can be in the form of a fairy godmother. This can be a friend. This can be, you know, the gods, anything like that, that can come and help them. And that leads us to the next part, which is our transformation. So in the section where we have the transformation, that is when they are taken out of the abyss or they learn something that takes them out of the abyss and hope is restored. So for example, in The Little Mermaid, she breaks the shell necklace, her voice is restored to her, and she is able to show Prince Eric that she was the one that he loved all along. Another example of a transformation would be um, in Coco when he realizes that his family does have his best interest at heart and Ernesto de la Cruz was not the good guy and he learns to show his family his love for music but still respect his family. So that's a transformation. Okay. And then once your character transforms, then they have to get back home. And this can be a quick scene. This doesn't have to be a long scene, but this is something where they need to be traveling back home. So this is where he can either um, part with his friends or maybe his friends can come with him back home. And that's really up to you. But what really is important is that they go back to the world of the known and they're completely changed. Their problem is solved. So for example, in um, The Little Mermaid, she comes back, she's a mermaid again, and she is able to show her father that she's different. And then her father uh, restores her legs, but with her voice, he uses his powers to do so. And then the world of the mermaids and the world of the people are more coexistent than they were before. Um, another example of a transformation is that um, Rapunzel's hair gets chopped off and turns brown, so she loses her powers, but she has her freedom, which is what she really wanted all along. And then in Coco, um, he comes back to his family, and they're able to replace the pictures of the family on the ofrenda, and they're able to see that. So the, this is the return, this is the big finish, and this is the hero's journey. If you think about most Disney movies that you've seen, um, you can find a hero's journey in that. So, for example, in Toy Story, Woody is the character. His problem is that uh, Andy gets a new toy that he thinks he likes better. The threshold is getting knocked out the window um, when he knocks out the window, and then he has to go down and, and save Buzz. The friends he meets along the way are the little squeaky um, aliens, the enemies, and the, and the other toys in Sid's bedroom. The enemies are, of course, Sid, who's going to try to blow him up, and the obstacles are that he's trying to get home, and he has to, like, jump into cars and go across the street and um, hide under cups and things like that. And then the abyss 
is really, um, they, there's two different abysses. There's one abyss for Woody and one abyss for Buzz, but the abyss for Buzz is him realizing that he's not really Buzz Lightyear, that he's a toy. And then the abyss for Woody is thinking that, um, you know, he's going to die and never see Andy again or his other toys. And then the transformation, of course, is when they use the rockets, you know, to, to realize that they become friends and they use that rocket to get back into the car. And then the journey home is then flying in that rocket to get back to Andy's car. And then they return to Andy's house and then all is better at Christmas time. And they have a new puppy and Buzz and Woody are friends. So that's an example of the hero's journey where you have two heroes, Buzz and Woody. Okay, so once you finish this hero's journey, you're gonna write the story here. And this is a narrative story. So this is where you write down just exactly what happens in the plot. This is not dialogue, this is just explaining what happens the way I explained what happened in the hero's journey in all those Disney movies. You wanna make sure that you include a cast of characters. So this is gonna have your hero. This is going to have the people who live in the world of the known. This is gonna have the people who live in the world of the unknown, the friends and the enemies, as well as um, anybody else that they meet along the way. And those are gonna be your characters. So you're gonna make a list and it needs to include a description. So if they meet a friend along the way, you wanna describe the friend. So for example, um, Ariel's friends, you can't just say Sebastian, you want to say Sebastian, who is a crustacean, if that makes sense. So this is a section where you can do this, and you can add more paper to this if you want to, where you can draw some of these characters to bring them to life. So take some time, flush out those characters, and see what you like about them. And then you're going to draw um, the setting here. So you're going to draw what you think the set for the world of the known looks like. So for example, if you were going to do Little Mermaid, you would draw underwater and ocean and you draw Atlantis. And then in the next page, you're going to draw the world of the unknown. And the world of the unknown is going to be uh, the land, the palace, the beach that she lives on. From here, you're going to use your list of songs. So we created this plot and then you are choosing songs that go with each of these. Now you can make a playlist in Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, or on YouTube. And when you read through the dialogue, you can just play that song. Or you can even do a karaoke track. If you just go onto YouTube and you type in Poker Face, Lady Gaga, karaoke, or instrumental, then you're able to sing the without her singing along with you. So that's totally up to you of how you wanna use your music. But remember, your music needs to drive the plot forward. So once you find those plot points, you need to have those songs that go with them. So looking back at the hero's journey here, um, let's think about it. When she is, her call to adventure, her song is part of your world. She wants to be part of your world. Um, when she's crossing the threshold, the song that the sea witch sings is it's the sea witch the sea witch's songs about um, poor unfortunate souls. And then um, you know her obstacle, she's trying to kiss the prince, so it's kiss the girl. So you need to think about songs. And again, any song you want in the whole world, it's up to you. If you wanted to write a song, you could also write a song. So once you have done that you're gonna create that list of songs and then that way you can put them in your script later where they go. And then here comes the biggest part, the script writing. So some tips for writing the script are, number one, you're going to really need to make sure that it is dialogue. This is different from the plot. When you were telling the story, you were saying, this is about a person who's doing this. But now you're gonna be using those characters to create sentences. So instead of saying, the little mermaid lived under the sea, you would have Ariel speaking, and she would be saying, I live under the sea, but I would really like to live on land. And so she's saying the plot. So think about the movies that you watch and think about the plays that you've seen. It's not um, telling what's happened, it's showing what happened through dialogue. So on each of these pages, I left you one page to write your script all the way through for each of the things. And you can use as much space or as little space as possible um, to create that script. But what you want to think about is a song to go with each of them. So you're going to have your call to adventure, and then you want to make sure that you have a song to go with that and decide where that song is going to go in the dialogue. 
once you finish all of that up, you can sort of read through it, maybe get some of your family members to play the other characters, and then, or maybe you can call some of your friends on Zoom and send it to them and have them help you read through it, and then play the songs to go with it or sing the songs that you want to sing to go with it. And you, my friends, have written your own jukebox musical. So I hope this uh, explanation helps you to understand the process. You can refer back to this video as much as you want and you can take as long as you need to, to do this. This is not a one-day project. I recommend doing this over a week or two um, and taking your time writing the story, creating the characters, and fleshing them out. And the best thing to think about is movies, especially Disney movies that you already love that follow the hero's journey to help you come up with your own story. So have fun, happy writing, enjoy yourself, and I look forward to seeing what you all came up with. Take care and have a great day.